On three minute analytical chemistry, we're going to be covering dispersion. Dispersion is separating light into its relative wavelengths, so we can use one specific wavelength to do chemistry or make a specific measurement. One way we can do this is by using prisms, and prisms rely upon the refractive index of light. Refractive index is the speed of light in a vacuum relative to its velocity in a particular medium. Typically light travels slower through medium than it does in a vacuum, meaning our refractive indices are greater than one. Now light here traveling in air has a refractive index of just around one. And when it strikes an interface between air and glass, some of the light can be reflected. Now the angle of reflection right here happens to equal the angle of incidence, where it's measured relative to the surface normal. Some of the light can be refracted. Refracted means our light changes the angle as it travels from the air through the glass interface. Now this refraction is dependent upon wavelength. And this is how we can separate our light. But first we'll cover the equation that tells us about refraction. That's given by Snell's law. Snell's law states that N1 sine of the incident angle equals N2 times the sine of the refractive angle. Where N1 is my index of refraction in the original medium, N2 is my index of refraction in the new medium, this is my incident angle, and this is my refracted angle. We can then solve for the refracted angle and see how light will change its angle relative to the surface normal as it travels into that new interface. Now additionally, we mentioned that the index of refraction changes as a function of wavelength. This means that my red light and my blue light will have different angles. Now, as my light enters the glass prism, it's going to be separated into different colors as a function of space. Now, after my light hits this new interface between the glass and the air, we can then solve Snell's law again, where I have a new incident angle and a new angle of refraction. And look at how my light is separated at the outside of the prism. Here I have a wall where I have my light striking the wall and I can see the blue light will strike it at one position, the red light will strike it at a different position and I can select one given wavelength of light to do a certain experiment. Now we're using refraction to separate light into its colors. The blue light in the prism is slowed down more relative to the red light. This means it gets bent at a greater angle relative to the incident beam of light in our prism. We can use these differences in angle to quantify how good of a job our prism does at separating light. This is called angular dispersion, and it's equal to d theta over d lambda, where this is our angle and this is our wavelength of light. Obviously, for a prism, you want it to separate your different colors of light at significantly different angles so that you can choose one particular angle to do your spectroscopy at. Now, prisms don't have a linear angular dispersion. It varies as a function of... Uh, wavelength, but they work over extremely large wavelength range, meaning if you're doing spectroscopy over a large wavelength range, prisms have advantages. Additionally, prisms don't have overlapping spectral orders as compared to diffraction gratings. This means that you can get simpler instrumentation and they work really well. Perhaps most importantly, prisms are a great way to introduce students to the nature of light. You can easily see how light is separated into many colors, thus inspiring them to understand more about the world around them.